Okay, it's way too cold to work on other things uh, today. So the BWS, um, or Zuma, depending on what you want to call it. Um, I do have this issue when I got it of the seat lock when you turn it to the left. Not unlocking the seat, which is why someone put a little wire there to pull on and unlock the seat. So we're going to fix that first because I'm, I want to get this stupid wire off here. It's in my way and it's pissing me off. I don't know why people settle for such a crappy fix. Um, I believe that the little actuator would be underneath the front shield. So I'm going to remove that. And I think that is just these two 10 millimeter bolts here and here. I don't believe there's any others holding that on. If there are, we'll find them. But uh, anyway, I'm going to pop those two off first and hopefully get to the back of the ignition switch there where the wire it's like a cable that comes through and goes to the back seat. Anyway, I'm going to take these two 10 mils off and be back in a sec. Oh, minus 16 battery. <laughs> Let's put another one in there. Okay, so the bottom bolt obviously is different than this top one. Let me get this washer off here. Is that the only thing holding it on? I do not know. <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe. Oh, there's two Phillips head screws. Apparently, right here on top of the leg shield, one at each side, one there, and one, where are we? Up there, two Phillips screws, so let's pop those out. Hopefully the fog from my breath isn't making a smoke screen on the camera. It is, as I said, I think it's about minus 16 today, Celsius. I do have a shop heater blasting on me, but uh, when it's this cold, it takes quite a while to warm it up. So just two Phillips screws. There we go. I should be able to unplug these plates. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, you can. There's one for one side, there's a black one. Wow. Oh, there we go, right from the back of the headlight. It's not going to come out of there. Gonna unplug the connector. Wow, when stuff is cold, it is cold. And let's unplug this one too. I just want to keep them both exactly the same. Plug this headlight back in. Okay. We should be able to see that little cable mechanism which is right there let's turn the key and see if it pulls on it it doesn't i'm turning the key now why doesn't that pull on that is it stuck weird let's see if it's moving Must be locked. Oh, come on. Give me a small screwdriver. Aha. Uh -huh. 
This looks like it's broken. It's not attached to anything. Oop. See this moving? That look attached to anything to you? That looks like it's busted off in here or something. Oh. Okay. So it pulls. It's supposed to be spring-loaded to pull back. So I wonder if this cable is broken between somewhere there in the back. That should be open. Pull the cheesy wire. Let's flop this rubber down. And... This is the cable, I believe, right there. Can you see that? That cable right there? Right in front of my finger. Not this one in the back. This one. Huh. So I wonder where the spring to pull this cable back is located because it is obviously attached to the key mechanism. It's just not pulling itself back and forth on its own. So I'm assuming this cable is broken somewhere along the line. Damn. That means I have to take body work off. <clears throat> or can I just take off these two 10 mils and this section will come off? This rubber thing is just around the gas cap and stuff. I'm gonna remove that. And the oil filler. Okay, that hand is still screwed. <laughs> it's getting better, but it's still screwed. Wow, that's on there tight. Okay, I'm going to get that off and be back. We'll just pull this rubber thing around, put the caps back on, and then we can figure out that sucker. Okay, so I pulled these two 10 millimeter bolts out of there, and they're just a small 10 mil, these two right here. And I pulled out the side panels, or the side, uh, this little back blue back panel, where is it? Right here, and it's got two... A screw on each side, that hole there, that hole there. That pisses me off. See, someone made that crack <clears throat> in there in order to fit this stupid little wire in. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, the panel just popped off. But you can see down in there, through the hole there, you can see that little brass fitting with a hole in it. Well, that's where the other end of the cable should go into. And where that is... Well, who knows? So I'm going to... Oh, there's a cable going there. How do I get this sucker out? I think it's this wire that's up here that's keeping it from popping out the front. Okay, back in one sec. Okay, so found it. Here's the end of the cable. See, yeah, right there with a the little ball on top. Now I just moved it out of the way. You can see the little cable end, the little round. I can't get my finger in to touch it. And someone's attached this wire to the round hole where the cable's supposed to go in. And I'm assuming the cable was just improperly adjusted so it wasn't opening anything or they didn't realize that's how the damn thing opened and uh, put this uh, piece of wire on there which I'm going to snip off and then I'm going to slip that little cable into the hole so it will now pull on it um, <laughs> god I don't know why people do stuff like this it's not that tough but anyway the cable is still in one piece I did get that with my finger and pull on it and if it was snapped somewhere along the line, it would have pulled, continued to pull through, but there's resistance on it. So I'm assuming that's all it was. Now to actually adjust this thing, if you ever have to adjust it, because it's not pulling hard enough, there's an adjuster right here. I think this is rubber. 
looks like a 10 millimeter bolt. You loosen this, you loosen this, and you increase or decrease the space to make it. You would wind it this way, so you'd turn the bottom part this way to pull the cable further apart and make it easier to pull. And if it was too tight, you'd loosen the distance, so you would turn this that way. And that's just a little lock nut. Um, same as adjusting any brake cable on a motorcycle or on a bicycle. Um, back in a second once I get that mess all cleaned up. Okay, so I've got that piece of wire off and now the whole deal is to get that cable end, that round barrel shaped cable end that you can just see right there. It's got to go in that hole and you can see the slot at the top of that brass hole. That's where the cable is going to have to, so when you put it in, the cable is going to have to kind of go down there. And then when it goes this way, the cable goes in between the upper and lower there. So it's kind of hard. You got to pull it over, kind of turn it so the cable's pointing up and around. And that cable can go down in that little slot. And then once it goes in there, the cable will go back. And it'll be hooked there. And when it goes this way, it unhooks. So in order to do that, we want to, want to get as much slack on the cable as possible. So we're going to take this. We know, we know that when we turn the key, it pulls it that way. So we want to give it as much slack there as possible. I've loosened these two bolts. They're eight millimeter. This is the tightening bolt. This just holds it in place once you've adjusted it. And this is the adjuster that adjusts the distance. So we want to turn that all the way. Uh, turn it this way. So you're going to turn it counterclockwise to screw it in and allow that cable to have as much play as possible. And God. <laughs> getting my hands in there. There we go. So I'm going to turn it this way. You should give it the most. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I always have to think about that twice. So as you pull the two adjusters apart the cable within tightens when you push them together the, the tape cable gets slack or looser so once we've got that we've got that all the way in so once we put the little cable in and that's probably the reason why it popped out because it didn't have enough tightness on it so once we get the little cable in the back we've just done this to allow more space to pull on that cable and get it in through that little hooked section once we get that hooked in and then we're going to go back here and unscrew that back and tighten that so that it's held in place. That probably just popped out on that end and no one knew how to fix it, oddly. It's pretty simple. Anyway, so I'm just gonna grab a pair of needle nose pliers and I will pull that cable in and hook it into that little hole back in one second once it's in. Okay, so you can see now the cable is hooked back in the little hole. Hopefully you can see that down in there. Now I'm going to put the two bolts back in that hold that on. And then we're just going to adjust it from up front and make sure that cable doesn't have, doesn't have so much slack in it and it won't pop out of that hole. Um, back in a second once I get the bolts all back in. Okay, so those two bolts are back on there. And now in order to make sure this cable's a little bit tighter so it doesn't pop out of the back again, I'm just going to loosen this the tiniest little bit. This is, the, again, the lock nut. This top one will come down. And you'll use two eight millimeter wrenches, tighten this while holding this, and that will lock it in place so it won't move around on you. And let's, oh, the seat closed, so I hope this works. Oh, I heard the click. Yes. Bingo. I'm gonna tighten that the slightest bit more just to be sure and lock the bolts down. So I'm just gonna, Oops, where are we? It's going to essentially shorten that cable the tiniest little bit. And then I'm going to lock those two together. Two, I need two eight millimeters. So here's one. And one more. So I'm going to hold the one that I used to adjust. Oops, get on there. Tighten the top one. There we go. 
to tighten the crap out of them. It's just that's it. And then this little rubber sleeve that kind of locks it in place and also keeps water from getting down in there. And let's try this one more time. Let's make sure it's not opening on its own. Let's pop. Good to go. That's how it should have worked. <laughs> that was about 10 minutes. I don't see why people would spend an hour <laughs> running a piece of wire in there when this is all they had to do. But anyway, um, that's the crap that you look at and you face. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to put this blue plastic panel back on. And now we don't have any nasty looking piece of wire sticking out the side. Um, if I can get some heat <laughs> out of this heater, I mean, <sighs> look at the... <laughs> I'm I'm smoking like a train in here. I mean, this thing is roasty hot. So uh, this thing is roasty hot. It's like a fiberglass panel that fills up full of propane and then heats. Um, I can actually make myself steam on here in, in about five seconds. Well, maybe about 10, 15, but whatever. <laughs> it's, it's not reaching me over here. Um, maybe I will uh, do the choke, which is not working properly. I don't know if I really feel like it. Um, in this kind of cold, you don't really want to... Your hands don't work well, and yeah, maybe I will. It's a bit of a pain in the butt down in there. I got to get to the top of the gas, uh, to the top of the carburetor and cylinder. I think I have to go through the uh, luggage thingy. And uh, let me take a look and see. I might do it. Maybe not. But anyway, um, if you like this stuff, please like, subscribe. It helps me in the analytics, helps uh, other people find these videos. Uh, so like, subscribe, hit the little bell notification, and uh, keep up with this project where we're going again. this uh, I took this thing out for a ride, and I think mm, it looks like it's going to go about 60 kilometers an hour, which is just under 40 miles an hour top speed. And that's just not good enough. I'm hoping for 90. And I'm hoping to spend zero on it. Anyway, um, thanks for watching.